just share my quick slides. You should be able to see those now. Uh, just want to thank you all so much for letting us join today and talk about what Let's Talk Science can offer uh, volunteers at UPEI. Uh, so my name is Tony Marie Skinner. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I am a regional coordinator for Atlantic Canada with Let's Talk Science. Uh, I am based actually in our St. John's, Newfoundland regional office, but I oversee um, all of the outreach sites in Atlantic Canada, including UPEI. Uh, so today I just want to give you a brief uh, presentation about what Let's Talk Science can offer and what uh, volunteers would be doing if they decide to volunteer with us. Uh, so first off, who are we? So we are a national charitable organization that is committed to preparing youth for evolving career and citizenship demands in a rapidly changing world. Uh, we want to positively impact all youth in Canada and encourage them to participate in STEM and enjoy STEM throughout their early years, right up through to grade 12 and into university. Uh, so we do this by providing resources to uh, youth educators and uh, classrooms so we can engage these students in science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, all the programs we offer are at no cost to our youth. So thanks to our many donors and partners, we are able to offer those programs for free. Um, all of our programs are curriculum aligned, and we might like to make sure that they are accessible in many different ways in English and in French. Uh, so we actually started this program back in 1993. So our current president, Bonnie Schmidt, started the program when she was a uh, physiology student at London University, uh, sorry, Western University in London. She was finishing her PhD and had a passion for science outreach and Let's Talk Science was born. So we're actually start celebrating our 30th anniversary this year and we're very proud of how the program has grown and hopefully we can grow the program a little more at UPEI. So the bread and butter of our program is our outreach program. So basically our outreach program operates out of uh, post-secondary institutes all over Canada. We currently are at 55 different uh, universities and colleges with over 3,500 volunteers all across Canada. So what our program does is it connects our youth to trained post-secondary volunteers to make hands-on science activities fun for students. So we make sure we provide you with all the training, the materials, the guides, everything you will need to be successful as a volunteer. Um, whether you're an undergrad, a graduate student, a professional, or someone who's just very enthusiastic about STEM, we welcome you to join our program. Uh, people are under the misconception that you need to be a science student to volunteer with us, but that's not the case at all. Uh, we have volunteers all across Canada with very different backgrounds who share a common passion for STEM. So at UPEI specifically, uh, our outreach program started there in 2009, uh, and we've reached youth all over PEI since then. So we currently have two amazing site coordinators who run our outreach program and coordinate with our volunteers, one of which is here today, Prantor, thanks for joining us. Um, and our outreach program is overseen by our fantastic site supervisor, Hiwat. I will not try to say her last name because I know I will butcher it, but she's here today as well, and she is fantastic. So um, in partnership with us at the National office, myself and Hiwat oversee our UPEI site. Um, our outreach site is greatly supported by the Faculty of Science and we are able to recruit volunteers through um, our partnership with them as well. So what are some volunteering opportunities we have um, at UPEI? So our main one that we offer is classroom outreach. So basically what that is, is that teachers can request a visit from us of, to cover a specific topic in their classroom. Um, we train our volunteers and match them up with teachers. We give them all of the materials they need, all of the instructions and a script, and we send them into the classroom to deliver these outreach activities for teachers so that students are getting supplemental activities to go along with the the materials that they are learning in classes. Um, we're seeing that teachers are trying to teach STEM, but they don't have access to the hands-on materials unless they buy them themselves. So that is a barrier to classrooms. So we wanna make sure that we remove that barrier. So we do provide these um, outreach visits for free. We also do uh, community group visits with say Girl Guides, Scouts. We visit libraries. We're very open to what we do. So they can also request a visit around a specific topic. We'll provide the materials and go into those, those uh, groups as well. Um, we also do booth activities and public events. 
again, depends on the situation, but we have done some events with um, UPEI where we've done some recruitment and talked about our program as well. So that's also an opportunity. Um, we have some opportunity for kit and material preparations. So maybe you're a little shy and you don't feel comfortable going into a classroom right away. Um, there is an opportunity for you still to be involved, prepare materials for another volunteer and still get some volunteer hours. Uh, last on the list is rural trips. So one thing we like to do is we want to make sure that we reach every youth in Canada. Um, it's hard to reach those youth when not all of them are located in an urban center like Charlottetown, for example. So we like to be able to take our outreach trips on the road and offer them to students who are outside of the uh, urban area. So there will can also be some opportunity to do some rural trips around uh, PEI. So we have some different op opportunities that you can pick and choose depending on what you like. Um, our volunteers uh, are uh, shown the opportunities that we have when they become available and you can choose to sign up for whatever you like. Uh, there is no minimum commitment for hours. You pretty much do whatever your capacity is to do. Maybe one semester you have a lot of free time and maybe another semester you don't have a lot of time. Uh, so we will take whatever commitment you would like to give us um, and we, we make sure our volunteers are very trained to go into the, uh, into the classroom. So I put some benefits here of volunteering with Let's Talk Science. Um, so there are lots of opportunities to grow your experience with youth, uh, develop your resume and your skills. You will also join a huge network of volunteers from coast to coast that support each other uh, through our initiatives. You can work on your leadership and communication skills. Uh, we offer networking with professionals in various industries and sectors. That's through our donor partners. Um, and we do offer quite a few networking events throughout the year, uh, virtually and in person. Um, we do offer free professional development opportunities and webinars to our volunteers. And I'll touch on that on the next slide. And most importantly, you will make a difference in the lives of youth all across Canada. Um, one thing I would like to know about our volunteer program is we do use a volunteer record. So any volunteering that you do is recorded and tracked. Uh, we can provide you with your volunteer record if you're applying for applications or for jobs or anything you may need proof of your hours. We can provide you with detailed information for that. Um, and if you choose to move to another site, maybe you get accepted to a new program at another university that has a Let's Talk Science program, your volunteer record moves with you. So we will always have your hours on hand and they will follow you from site to site. Uh, we also do provide our verification letters if you ever need them and are happy to pr prove that you are a volunteer and we provide volunteer certificates at the end of the year. Uh, we also do a national volunteer award every spring. So uh, our very important volunteers that do lots of work can apply and can be nominated and have a chance to win and be awarded for their volunteering efforts. I touched on the professional development opportunities, but I just wanted to show uh, some of the opportunities that we do have. So once you are a trained volunteer with us, uh, you, will con you will complete first your basic volunteer training, which is a course online that is self-paced. Um, so once you've completed that, you will have access to these courses. I've just taken a screenshot on this slide to show you what some of them look like. Um, so we have an activity development workshop, which talks about how to create uh, age appropriate STEM activities for different youth. Uh, we have an Indigenous Worldviews, Perspectives, and Realities course, which discusses um, the understanding of Indigenous communities and how we can be more sensitive when we are going into Indigenous communities doing outreach. Uh, we have a create a, uh, Creating Disability Inclusive Science Learning Environments course, which discusses how to make science more accessible for everyone and how to expand our inclusive science practices when working with students with disabilities. That one is my favorite course. I highly recommend it if anyone chooses to volunteer. Uh, supporting youth, uh, e outreach and eco-anxiety, which talks about how climate change can have a negative effect on mental health and youth. And then we have a sustainable kit development course, which talks about how to make our activities more sustainable for the environment and use less um, consumable activities. So all of these opportunities are available for our volunteers for free. At the end of them, you do get a certificate so you can add it to your resume or share it on your LinkedIn. Um, and we are very, very proud of these courses. And we like to make sure we're investing in our volunteers just as they're investing their time in us. Um, so that is all for me today. I do have our contact information here. So um, Let's Talk Science at UPEI's email is there as well. That will bring you directly to our site coordinators. Um, but if you have any questions, you can certainly reach out to me via this email.